In this video, we're going to learn how to read and write an array of structs to a binary file using C. And this could be useful to store the collection of data that a program works with in different files for retrieval and use later. So for example, maybe our program works with a collection of student data. We'll use typedef and struct to define a student type for our example here. So we'll say typedef struct student and our student structs are gonna have three members, a name for the student, an age for the student, and an average for the student. And we'll define functions that read and write an array of student structs to a binary file. So the first thing we'll do is include a few libraries to help us. We'll include stdlib.h because we're gonna dynamically allocate the memory that we use when we read in an array of structs from a file. We'll also include stdbool.h so we can have our write function return false or true, depending on whether it was successful or not. And then we'll also include string.h because we're going to use the string copy function to set the name values here for our students. The functions themselves will look like this. We'll say bool, write data, car star file name, student star data, and int total. So the write function is gonna to write to the file with this name. It's gonna write this array of student data. And this is the total number of students in this array here. It's gonna return true if it was successful and false otherwise. The read function will look like this. We'll say student star read data car star file name and int star total. So read data is going to attempt to read the student structs that are stored in the file with this name. It's going to return a pointer to a dynamically allocated array of student structs on the heap. It's also going to return via pass by pointer the total number of structs that were read in because we don't know how many structs are in the file, we're going to say. Now we can start to implement this. The first thing we'll do is dynamically allocate space for an array of students on the heap. So we've made a pointer to a student called school, and we'll say school is equal to malloc size of student times three. So we've dynamically allocated space to store three student structs on the heap. And then we'll just copy some data into here. So that way we can write this data to the file and then read the data from the file after we've done that. So first we'll say string copy school at index zero name, and we'll say John. And then we'll set school at index zero age to 19, school at index zero average to 80.25. And then we'll make two more students. So I'll just copy and paste this to speed it up a bit. We'll make a student here named Nira. They will have an age of, let's say, 21. Their average will be 90.50. We'll make one more student, Najib. Their age is going to be 20. And we'll give them an average of 85.66. So now we have three students in this school dynamically allocated array. And now we want to write this student data to a binary file. So we'll copy and paste this. And now I'll provide a definition of the write data function down here. So the first thing we'll do is create a file pointer variable because we're gonna have to open up the binary file. So we'll say file star file. And then we'll say file is equal to f open file name and wb. So we say file name here because we're going to open up the file with the file name that was passed to this function. We say wb here because we're going to write to a binary file. And wb is basically write to a binary file mode. Now fopen is going to return a file pointer that we're going to store in a file. If there was a problem opening the file, it's going to return null. So if file is equal to null, something's gone wrong. And we're going to return false to signal that the function didn't work. 
Otherwise, we're going to try to write this student data here to the file. Now, one problem we've got is that when the file is read, we want to know how many records, how many structs are in the file. We know that with total here. So the first thing we're going to do in our file is write the total to the file. So the format of our file is basically going to be total, and then we'll have the student data at index zero, the student data at index one, and so on. But we're going to start off our file with the total. So that way we know how many structs need to be read from the file. And we also know how much space to dynamically allocate on the heap to store those structs in an array. So next we can write that total value to the file. We'll say f write and total size of int one and file. So the way these four arguments work is that f write is going to write data of this size this many times to the file where the data starts at this memory address. In this case here, it's somewhat simple. We've got one integer and here's the memory address of that integer. It's going to then be written to this file here and that's it. Now f write is going to return how many of whatever size this thing is, it was able to write to the file. So it'll return one in this case, if it works successfully, if f write doesn't equal one, we've got an error and we're going to return false in that case. Next, we can write the actual struct array to the file. So similarly, we're going to say f write data size of student total and file. So very similar to before we're writing something of this size, this many times to this file. And we're writing the data starting at this memory address to the file. And again, F write is going to return how many of these things here it was able to write successfully. So how many of these, whatever it is, in this case, a student, it was able to write to the file successfully. So F write should equal total. And if it doesn't, we've got a problem. So if this called F write doesn't equal total, something has gone wrong and we're going to return false. And then finally we can close the file. So we'll say F close file. Now we've been doing a good job with our error handling and I want to keep that up. So we'll also check for the case that the F close doesn't work. If F close doesn't work, it's going to return end of file. So if F close doesn't work, it's going to return end of file. And if it does, we're going to return false to signal that something went wrong. Otherwise we're going to return true because everything has worked. Okay. So this should be it for the right function. Let's test it out. Now up here, we'll call write data. We'll say write data. We'll call the file school.bin. School is going to be our array of student data. And then we'll say three for the total, because we know that we've got three students in our array there. Now, if this function succeeds, we'll output write data. Okay. We'll just say printf write data. Okay. Backslash n for a new line. Otherwise, if something went wrong, we'll output error writing to file backslash n for a new line and we'll return one. We'll return one instead of returning zero because that's actually a signal to the shell here, to the terminal that something went wrong in the execution of our program. Now, after we've written the data to the file, we're actually done with this school dynamically allocated array of students. So we'll free it here. We'll say free school. Okay. Let's see how our program is doing so far. We'll save it. We'll compile it and then we'll run it and it says write data. Okay. And it looks like we do have a file called school.bin there. So next let's try to implement the read data function 
to read the data from the file and store it into an array of structs. So we'll copy and paste this. And again, we'll provide the definition of the function down here. And the first thing we'll do again is open the file. So we'll say file star file to make our file pointer variable. And then we'll say file is equal to f open file name. And this time we'll say rb. So again, f open is going to try to open the file with this name here. rb is read from a binary file mode. So we're going to read from a binary file. And again, it's going to return the file pointer. Now, if there's a problem, the file pointer that's returned is going to be null. So we'll check for that. So if file is equal to null, we're going to return null. In the case of the read data function, we're actually returning a pointer to the array of student structs on the heap. So in this case here, we're going to handle an error in the function by returning null. And that's going to be the signal that this function failed. The first thing we'll do is read the total value that we stored in the file when we originally wrote the data to the file. So we'll say f read total size of int one file. So pretty similar to f write. We're reading from this file one thing with this size. And we're going to store it into this memory address here. We're going to store the data we read from the file into this memory address here. So like f write, f read is going to return the amount of things of this size that it was able to read from the file. So again, this call to f read should return one. And if it doesn't, we've got a problem. So if it doesn't return one, we're going to return null because something has gone wrong. Next, we can dynamically allocate space for the array of student structs on the heap because we now know how many we need to store. So we'll say student star data is equal to malloc size of a student struct times the total. And we'll say star total here. And we're saying star total here because again, this parameter here total is a pointer. And we're using pass by pointer to return that total to the calling function as well. That's why here we didn't have to have an and because we're actually just using the pointer directly. Next, let's use fread again to actually read the data from the file into this dynamically allocated memory. So we'll say fread data size of student dereference total and then file. So here we're going to read this many things of this size from the file and we're going to store them into the block of memory starting at this memory address here. And again, we use star here because we're dereferencing the pointer there and size of student. That's the size of our student struct. Again, we'll check to make sure the correct number of things was read from the file. So if f read doesn't return total when it's called, we have a problem. So we're going to return null if that's the case. Now, because we just allocated space here on the heap, if we were to just return null without freeing that space, we would have a memory leak. So we're also going to free that dynamically allocated space. We'll say free data. And then we can close our access to the file next. So we'll say f close file. And again, if it doesn't work, we'll return null. So if f close equals end of file, then we're going to return null. And again, we'll free that dynamically allocated memory to prevent a memory leak. And then finally, we can return the pointer to that dynamically allocated array where we stored the data from the file. So up here, we can now test out this function. So we'll create a variable total to store the total number of structs that have been created on the heap. We'll also create a pointer to those structs. So we'll say student star 
file data, and that's going to store the pointer to our dynamically allocated array of structs on the heap. Then we can call the function. So we'll say file data is equal to read data school.bin and then end total. So read data is going to read the data from school.bin. It's going to return via pass by pointer here the total number of structs that have been created on the heap. And then it's going to return a pointer to that array of structs. And we're going to store that in file data. Now, if something goes wrong, we know the function is going to return null. So we'll check for that. We'll say if file data is equal to null, then printf error reading from file backslash n for a new line and return one again as a signal to the shell to the terminal that something went wrong in the execution of our program. If file data doesn't equal null, then we should actually print out the student records so we can see them. So we'll say printf backslash n, we'll say data read OK, backslash n, backslash n, and then we'll create a loop. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than total, i plus plus, and we'll print out each student record. So we'll say printf student percent d backslash n, and we'll output i plus one. So that way we get student one, student two, student three, and so on. And then we can output each student's name, age, and average. So we'll say printf name colon percent s for a string backslash n file underscore data at index i dot name we'll output the age so we'll say age colon percent d backslash n and we'll output this student's age and then we'll also output the average so we'll say average percent f we'll say dot two to limit the decimal places backslash n and then we'll say file data at index i, the average. So because file data is a pointer to this dynamically allocated array of student structs, we can use it like an array with this array indexing syntax. And then we can access these struct members by saying dot name, dot age, dot average, and so on. And then finally, when we're done, we can free the dynamically allocated memory that we allocated in the read data function to actually store this data from the file. So before we run our program, I'm just going to fix this. That should be percent %d because we're outputting an integer here. I'll also put a new line here just to separate our records a little bit more. So we'll save this. We'll recompile. And then we'll run it. And we get data read OK. And again, that's after writing the data to the file. And we get our three student records here, student one, student two, and student three. And you can tell that we've successfully read the data from the file. So this is how we can read and write an array of structs to a binary file using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.